Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Blaster Windows Worm, but before we start talking about that, I'd just like to quickly say thank you for helping me get to 75,000 subscribers, which is quite frankly pretty insane. I never thought I'd make it this far, so thank you for helping me get here. Uh, originally when I was going to look at this worm, it was going to be just like you see here on your screen, with five virtual machines networked together. You can see that the worm is already spreading throughout them, however, in the grand scheme of things, that was pretty boring and not really representative of what the worm can do. So, I decided the best course of action would be to move this over to a physical PC network, similar to the Sasser worm video that I made a couple of years ago. Blaster predates Sasser by about nine months and is very similar. They're both networms and they spread without any human intervention through a use of an exploit. And like Sasser, Blaster did infect millions of PCs around the world very quickly and became a huge problem with many, many variants of the worm being spawned in the weeks following the original. Okay, so since we aren't virtualizing the worm, I've got this local area network all set up. I have four Windows XP computers, and there was going to be one Windows 2000 laptop, as you can see here. However, unfortunately, in the middle of testing and preparing this network and getting it all set up to run the worm, my Windows 2000 laptop actually had its hard drive die, which is very unfortunate. So this one will be sitting out this time, so we are just using four Windows XP machines. And I know what you're thinking. There's only three machines right here. But if we pan a little to the left, we can see that we have Windows XP running on my uh, DDR Dance Dance Revolution arcade machine. Normally these don't come with Windows XP, but some clever engineers developed a little uh, tool that you can use to run your arcade cabinet with a computer and run different DDR mixes or in the groove and stuff like that. So I swapped out the hard drive, installed a blank copy of Windows XP Home, and yeah, we're going to be using that to uh, run the worm. So let's check it out. In a nutshell, Blaster spreads very quickly by scanning for IP addresses of any computer it can find and infecting those that are vulnerable and not already infected. When executed, the worm adds a mutex named Billy to the system to prevent reinfection if the worm has already infected the computer. If another copy of Blaster finds the PC and tries to infect it, it will encounter the Billy mutex and exit, preventing a computer from being infected more than once. To infect computers, Blaster utilizes an exploit in the Windows Remote Procedure Call to open a shell on victim computers, which are then ordered to transfer and execute the worm via FTP. Once infected, the worm starts scanning random IP addresses for new computers to infect. It will usually begin with computers on the local area network, looking at similar IP addresses to the host computer for possible targets. In my local area network demonstration, it took just over a minute for all four computers to become infected. There are numerous references to Bill Gates throughout the worm, from the mutex named Billy to a comment that reads, I just want to say, love you, San. Billy Gates, why do you make this possible? Stop making money and fix your software. So what does Blaster actually do? On certain dates, namely the last half of every month, it tries to launch a distributed denial-of-service attack against WindowsUpdate.com. For the most part, though, damage from the Blaster worm came from lost productivity due to infected computers rebooting endlessly due to the exploit crashing the Windows RPC service. So here we have our network of infected virtual machines. Uh, removal is actually not very difficult for the Blaster worm, so... Whenever your machine pops up that is shutting down, simple thing is to just go to the run command and type in shutdown A. That tells it to abort the shutdown. And you can do this for any computer that's displaying this behavior. And now that you've aborted the shutdown, you have quite a bit of time to uh, alleviate the problem. So first things first, we'll remove the registry key that allows the worm to run a boot up. It's a simple current version run key. Let's see. Current version run. So the worm adds in. Let's just make this a little bigger. Here we go. So the worm adds in Windows Automation mslaf.exe. The original file name would be msblast.exe if we were running the original variant of this worm. However, this is the E variant, as it's the only one I could really get to work, and functionality-wise, it's pretty much identical to the first variant. So, we'll just go ahead and delete that, and then to further remove the worm, just go to the System32 folder, scroll down, 
and delete msleft.exe. And congratulations, this await. Oh I messed up. See, it's in use, so we have to go into task manager and actually end the process first. And then we can delete it. So now, congratulations, this machine is now blaster free. However, with it being on the virtual network with a bunch of other infected machines, it will probably very quickly be reinfected. So in order to properly disinfect a large network, you would have to disconnect every machine from the network, clean each one individually, and only when they are all clean, patched, and updated so that they are immune to the worm, could you then re-network them and put them back on the internet. So a huge pain really to try and remove from a huge network, but in a single user scenario, really not that bad. So that is about it for the blaster worm. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you again very much for helping me get to 75,000 subscribers. I enjoy reading all of your comments and messages and channel posts and all that. So thank you once again. See you next time.